so lots of um, so we have a, we have a process where we work with mine owners and mm -hmm. we source product from all over the world. So we have serpentine here. We get serpentine from Australia, and uh, really beautiful. You can see all of the dual tone about the mineral. You can see some of the browns kind of coming through. Mm -hmm. um, but we have a very specific process that lets us take things that are very big mm -hmm. and then make them small uh, enough to be used as pigment. Um, we use some semi-precious stones um, like amethyst. I don't guess we don't have amethyst now, but if you look at zoocyte here, do you see kind of the reddish tone yes. in here? Mm-hmm. In there. Absolutely beautiful. Those are rubies. Oh. Mm -hmm. So a lot of um, these minerals really help us to produce some very uh, interesting and, and different texture effects. And um, all of this happens just it's a natural occurrence with, with using mineral. Mm -hmm. And how, how do you process them into actually being used? Is it just... Oh, here we go. Oh, how do we are. make paint? Yeah. <laughs> We've got the great answer for that. So, it kind of looks like this. So this is just kind of a flow chart and gives you an idea what it looks like from the macro point of view. But um, really, our, our desire to use minerals came out of the fact that, uh, that our founder of our company, Daniel Smith, uh, was really interested in the in these civilizations. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the minerals that you see here were significant um, minerals that were used by those civilizations when they made their uh, ancient uh, uh, formulation on paint. So we looked at a number of uh, of those civilizations, and for instance, lapis lazuli, so which mm -hmm. which means in, in Latin yeah, lapis. that means the blue stone. Mm -hmm. So lapis lazuli was very important to the Egyptian uh, civilization. Not only did they use it for paint, but they also used it for uh, jewelry. They also used it for fabric dye. They used it for, for a number of different things. So um, big historical color. Um, looking at some of the other ones here. Um, this is Sleeping Beauty turquoise. So this, this comes out of uh, Arizona from the Sleeping Beauty mine. So. We, um, so we worked with a lot of these mine owners and, and one of the things that we figured out right away was that we couldn't use the same process that they used because it, we couldn't produce it in adequate volumes in order to make it worthwhile. So we had to come up with a, a technology or a process that we call Primatech, which is short for Primitive Technology. Mm -hmm. So it kind of starts like this. We have a gentleman by the name of Bruce, and he's our full-time mineralogist. Been with us for quite a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, his job is to source all of the beautiful minerals that you see here. So he has to arrange for the transportation. He has to make sure he buys in, in adequate amounts. So basically, he buys in 15-year increments. And that is especially important today, considering what we're talking about with, with uh, the fluctuations and oh, yeah. costs and things. Um, so having um, having a process and having a, 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 a system where we buy that much product in advance helps us to kind of ride these things out that we see in our economy. So when we're uh, ready to kind of make our, our first batch, we break off a piece of mineral that's about the size of a watermelon, okay. about this size. And then we'll put it in this first mill here, which is what we call a jaw mill. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it puts gentle pressure on the mineral and causes it to break. Mm -hmm. And it'll break along, about, um, basically along cleave lines, or just like the, just like the way a diamond would break. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just so when it puts the pressure on it, we'll get about 10 to 12 pieces about this size. Okay. That'll come out of that watermelon piece. And then we come over to what we call our hammer mill, and that hammer mill is a spinning plate. So you see all of this, um, see all of this banding, this gray banding here. Yeah. This is all product that we really can't use in, in our in our process, in our paint making process. We have to figure out how to remove it. Oh. So the hammer mill spins and then eats away all of the product that we can't use. So after it goes through there, we're kind of down to product now that looks like this mm -hmm. this size. Okay. okay. And then it goes into our ball mill, and this is kind of where all the magic happens. So, in this ball mill, it's a spinning cylinder like like a clothes dryer, and inside of it, there's about probably about 200 ball bearings. And then we load these on the sides, 
and then you turn it on and it tumbles like mm -hmm. a clothes dryer, mm -hmm. and it breaks down these little minerals into something that is really, really, really small. Basically, it breaks it down to what, into what we call 40 microns. Yeah. So the significance of 40 microns is that it's half the diameter of a human, human hair. hair. Yeah. It's which is a hundred microns, right? Yeah. And the thickness of this sheet of paper is a hundred microns. Mm -hmm. Oh. So literally, what's coming out out of the bottom of that minerals and um, make them so that they can be used for water. Color. And does it go through like a cleaning process after you're done with one of the groupings of minerals and then, you know, so you're going to move on to another one? Mm -hmm. and, okay. So basically from, from there, mm -hmm. we um, we pull all of our ingredients together. So we only have three ingredients. Okay. So we have uh, the mineral or pigment, mm -hmm. we have gum arabic, yep. and we have distilled water. Oh. So those are the three things. So we don't add anything to it to make it do that. It's just it like it weather. That's mm -hmm. what it looks like. Mm -hmm. I've got to get my hands on these. <laughs> yeah, I'm really impressed with the different I'm variations. I mean, it looks so 3D. Mm -hmm. And that's the and that's what it really what we're able to impart to the artist is giving them another tool to be able to express something that they want people to see. Yes, it's like getting me so excited. I love getting these pictures, <laughs> and they're just not like anything else. They're very different. They offer they offer something something very different than, than what you see from anyone else. Yeah, it's just amazing. It just it looks like it's gonna have all this texture. Yeah, and then you touch it and it's just so mm -hmm. So and this is really just kind of a small part of our line. So 36 of our 262 colors come from mineral. But we also offer a very large line of, of uh, different colors. Mm -hmm. So that's a really nice uh, brochure there that shows all of our minerals and talks about them and where they come from. That's so beautiful. So if you as an influencer probably would find that very interesting because that would give you a lot of content. Absolutely, yeah. Go off and talk about one whole one. Like, oh, we're going to paint with this today and let's talk all about it. That would just be mm -hmm. Very cool. All right, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. Okay, I saw that you have the little stickers.